foot protocol for our site is an AP foot, a medial oblique, and a lateral. Here's some technique examples, CR versus DR. AP foot, you're gonna angle your tube 10 degrees posteriorly. Central ray, base of the third metatarsal. Foot nicely planted on the imaging plate here, ideally sort of midline to the plate. Marker on lateral border and use a lead arrow if possible. And this demonstrates the tarsal metatarsal joint spaces better, reduces foreshortening. Why? Because we have an arch here in the foot, so the angle will counteract that arch. Okay. How do you evaluate it? Well, you want all the foot on. Fairly basic, all right? The third, fourth, and fifth metatarsals will be superimposed. Normally the first and second, depending on the patient anatomy, will be generally open. On the AP oblique, you're gonna rotate 30 to 40 degrees medial rotation, same centering. To evaluate this one for positioning, the third, fourth, and fifth metatarsals are now free of superimposition, and the first and second are now superimposed. There are also open joint spaces and the um, fifth tuberosity here is the one that's most likely, most often fractured. Medial lateral foot, so placing foot in true lateral. We'll practice this in lab, but you may need to play with the knee a little bit, raising upper and lower um, to try and get this foot to fall in lateral position. I definitely feel the base of the foot here and make sure it's superimposed over itself. Same centering. Ideally, you want all the metatarsals superimposed for your lateral foot. Looking at this lateral foot, I want you to do a quick sort of evaluation. Is this in true lateral position? No, big no, big N-O, capital N, right? Look at all these metatarsals. They are basically almost all by themselves. So this is not a good lateral, but how do you figure out which way to move the patient? Right, so I look to the fifth metatarsal here, you got fifth tuberosity, and that will tell me if I need to raise the patient's knee up or drop it down. This is ideal here, completely superimposed. And then uh, your orders might specify weight-bearing feet. This doesn't happen too often at the main hospital, but the off-sites do this more often. If there is a doctor that specifies a weight-bearing foot exam, the lateral weight bearing, depending on what equipment you have, they may stand on a step up against the wall stand, or there might be a piece of equipment like this is demonstrating here, and you'll use a horizontal beam and shoot through the cassette between the feet. It's used to evaluate the arches most often. And the AP weight bearing, most often it has both feet for comparison. The patient will stand on the cassette. You have to utilize a 15 Oops, sorry about that. I'm not sure how I flipped back there. Um, 15 degree angle. Why do we do weight bearing? Most often it's for arches or this lis frank joint injury. And that uh, is a separation right in here. See how wide in this area is? It's usually a ligament tear within that area and possibly includes a fracture. Know your anatomy. Toes, if you get an order for a toe, at our clinical site, we routinely do a AP foot to include all the toes, an oblique of the specified toe, and a lateral of the specified toe. So for us, we would do the foot as normal with a 10 degree angle. Your textbook identifies that you would specify to the toe itself. All right, so for boards. Oblique toes. Put the foot in that medial oblique rotation, similar to that of the oblique foot. You're gonna collimate to the affected toe and you're gonna use tape, sponges, or gauze to separate the toes that you don't want involved. So you don't want these superimposing over itself. Ideally, you separate the toe from the others. The lateral, uh, this is an example of a lateral great toe with the patient on their side. They're using either a tourniquet or some tape this is utilizing um, some gauze in between the toes to be able to make that lateral exposure. A lateral of the fourth, they're using a rolled up gauze to separate out. 
looks something like this. Toes are hard, especially on elderly people. They may uh, specify that they're looking for a bunion. What is a bunion? It's a bony bump that forms on the joint at the base of your big toe most often. Okay, It's very painful sometimes for people. And it forms right here. You can see the bump on the bone here. Sesamoid bones. I've never done these as a technologist, um, but if you're working at a different site, you may get an order for this. It's a tangential view. And remember that tangential view skims. So they're using, I believe, a tourniquet here to pull the toes back. So dorsiflex the feet. This is a prone version. Same idea. And you're looking for the little sesamoid bones. Okay. Calcaneus. For us, calcaneus routine is a lateral calcaneus and an axial calcaneus. The axial calcaneus, you are going to want to dorsiflex the foot as much as you can. You're going to angle 40 degrees cephalad or posterior. Okay, This is also called the plantar dorsal view. So you're going through the plantar, plantar surface, exiting out the dorsal. Okay, You really want to pull that back. So if they need a sheet to wrap around or a tourniquet to wrap around to get those toes back, that's ideal. This is what it will look like. All right, ideally, there's a fracture right here. Know your anatomy. And lateral calcaneus. Almost exactly the same as lateral foot position. You're just going to collimate to the calcaneus and center one inch inferior to the medial malleolus. Lateral calcaneus. This is a fractured calcaneus. You can see the fracture is running through. Know your anatomy. Ankle. For us, our ankle routine is an AP ankle, a mortise, which is the 15 to 20 degree oblique ankle, and a lateral. For AP ankle, you're going to dorsiflex the foot, and you're going to center midway between the malleoli. This is what the ankle will look like. I would like you to not include as much of the toes on your collimation. The mortise. I want you to rotate the patient's leg. Don't just rotate the patient's foot. See how this person is rotating? They have a hand on their knee and a hand on their lower leg. You're going to rotate internally 15 to 20 degrees, keeping the foot dorsiflexed. And that's going to open the mortise joint. And that's what you want to see clearly here. Here's an example of an AP. You can see where the distal tibia fibular joint is closed and superimposing over the talus. On the mortise, that joint is still closed. You're not looking to open that, but you're looking to have an open space here next to the fibula, going through here, and an opening here. That's your mortise joint, basically going around the talus. Looking at this ankle image here, this patient's foot is dropped. It's not dorsiflex, which is closing a joint space. You want it nice and open here. Lateral ankle, very similar to foot and almost exactly the same as calcaneus. They're going to be in true lateral position. You're going to center right over that medial malleolus, dorsiflex the foot, adjust it into lateral position. So if you're, you want your foot to also be lateral along with your ankle. So you should see um, the fibula end here superimposed over the posterior part of the tibia. You should see a nice clear joint space here between the tibia and the talus. Some example of good and bad images here. This lateral is not a good lateral. Why? There's not a clear joint space open and the fibula is too far forward. So if you know your anatomy, is that patient's toes away from the table or too far towards the table? So the toes are up away from the table because the fibula is forward. If the fibula was way back here, the toes would be too far down and the heel would be up. This one is a clear open joint space here, as you can see, and the fibula is superimposed over posterior tibia. Play with these images a little bit. Try and figure it out for yourself. Put your foot into lateral position. Find your fibula or your lateral malleolus. Rotate your foot towards the table and away from the table. Which way does the fibula move? And that will help you. In your textbook, it identifies a 45 degree oblique ankle. We don't use this routinely at our site, but it can be on your boards. 
So the 45 degrees is to open this distal tibial fibular joint. You will close this side of the mortise. If your mortise is over rotated, it's going to look like the 45. If you're closed on this side, you went 45 instead of the 15 to 20. Two examples here. See how it's closed on this side here? The mortise is closed, so that's a 45 degree. The, toe, the toes have also dropped. This is an excessive oblique. I think it's way over where it's supposed to be. This is not a mortise either. Possible ankle dislocations or fractures. You might get the patient brought in like this via the ER, okay? Um, you're gonna put that that cassette underneath that patient and shoot your lateral first. You might need to do some cross table work to obtain the AP or any form of oblique. You won't rotate that patient into an oblique ankle. You'll utilize two bangles for that. Uh, a fracture we get a lot are um, trimalalar fractures. Okay, there's multiple fractures within the ankle. These are just an example of types of fractures that you might see. And that's it.